As Don Berwick said uh, last year in the King's Fund, if quality is not improving, then it's going backwards. You know, there's a negative entropy in our, in our ways of working. If we don't focus on continually improving quality of care, then it will go backwards. So we need to make sure that we're building organizations that are learning organizations focused on continuous improvement, where there is systems thinking about how we work together across teams, across disciplines, across boundaries, in order that we can deliver um, high quality care. It's about ensuring cooperation and collaboration. It's about ensuring that we're working multi-professionally so that we are drawing on each other's skills and knowledge and experience in order to improve quality, in order to learn continually, in order to innovate, uh, to ensure that we're delivering the kind of care that we aspire to deliver. And we published last year the results of an enormous study um, in, of healthcare organizations that um, used a, a wide variety of methodologies. It involved looking at 650 frontline teams. We analyzed the meetings of board uh, meetings over an 18 month period for 70 healthcare organizations, 80,000 pages of the most exhilarating material you can imagine. Um, <laughs> We interviewed key stakeholders. We had over 700 res responses from patient and carer organizations. Uh, we used national staff survey data, and patient outcome data, patient satisfaction data. And really what was kind of core, what came out as a core piece of learning from all of that, apart from the recognition that there was huge variability across healthcare organizations in quality of care, from very dark places to very light places, was the fundamental importance of dialogue in organizations, of people talking to each other, top to bottom, end to end, of teams engaging in discussion about how can we improve quality of care? How can we develop new and improved ways of delivering care within the resources that we have available? How can we learn from each other across team boundaries? How can we ensure that we're getting rid of the blockages that prevent us from giving the quality of care that we want to deliver. And that's about team and inter-team working. It's not just about how we work within our team, but our, how our team works with other teams across the, uh, the system. Not just within our organizations, but across organizations as well. When we interrogate healthcare systems internationally, when we talk to staff <coughs> in healthcare systems internationally and ask them about working in teams, the vast majority of people in healthcare tell us that they work in teams. So if we look, for example, from the staff survey data in England, which is just a wonderful data source, it's been running for 10 years and we can link the data to patient satisfaction and patient mortality and care quality, 91% of staff in England say that they work in a, in a team. And then we ask some simple questions. Does your team have clear shared objectives? Do you work interdependently, i.e. as a team? Do you meet regularly to review your performance and how it can be improved? Three simple basic criteria of team working. And then the figure drops from 91% to about 40%. So what we can say is that about 9 or 10% of people say they don't work in a team. About 50% say that they work in, if you like, a pseudo team, not a real team, and about 40% say they work in a real team. Now here's some data to, I want to show you from primary care organizations. It's based on 50,000 respondents when we had these <coughs> primary care organizations in England. And what it shows is the, percent, the relationship between the percentage of people working in real teams and health and safety. So the more people working in real teams, the lower the levels of injuries that staff report in the previous year, the lower the levels of staff witnessing errors that could harm staff or patients, and the lower the levels of bullying and harassment and physical violence against staff. The more people working in pseudo teams, the higher the levels of injuries, of errors, of physical violence against staff and of bullying and harassment and abuse. And we think it's because when 
people think that they work in teams but there aren't clear shared objectives, then you begin to get conflict, you begin to get uh, misunderstandings about who's responsible for what, you begin to get mistakes made about who's taking responsibility for what action in relation to patient care, checking pressure ulcers or whatever. And so errors are made and we know that errors damage people's health and kill people. If we look in the acute sector at the data, what this is showing, it's based on data from 120,000 people working in 170 hospitals. What we have here on the bottom right, sorry, what we have here on the bottom right is people reporting in what we would call real teams, reporting their experiences working in real teams, the small group of people who say they don't work in a team. This is the group of people who say no to one of our three criteria questions. You understand? These are people who say no to two of those <coughs> questions and people who say no to three. And you can see that the rate of errors and stress and injury is much higher when people are working in pseudo teams. And again, we think it's for these similar reasons about lack of clarity of shared objectives, in effect, lack of really good team working. It also extends, these, these important findings also extend to mental health at work as well. We know, again, that stress at work is a really important issue in healthcare. The levels of sickness absence in healthcare are, uh, if not the, amongst the highest uh, in, in industry within our countries. We think from the data that we've been gathering that probably somewhere between uh, one in four and one in three health service staff are suffering from such high levels of stress that they really need some kind of professional support. And that is deeply, deeply worrying. And it has been a chronic problem which we failed to address. Because it's very difficult to be compassionate, to pay attention to the other, to be emp emp empathic in response to the other's pain, to take intelligent action when we're really stressed ourselves. And the data that we have over a number of years now, we began gathering this data in the 1990s, shows that when people work in real teams, stress levels are considerably lower. What this graph is showing is, sorry, what this graph is showing, <coughs> I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk you through it. What the, what the graph I'm going to show you shows <coughs> is that when people work in real teams, levels of stress are considerably lower. When they work in pseudo teams, level of, levels of stress are considerably higher. But we also know that there's a relationship between team working and patient mortality. So the data that we've been gathering on the National Staff Survey in England over the last uh, 10 years, we've been able to interrogate and discover that when 5% more staff work in real teams, then we see a 3% decline in hospitals, in an individual hospital, in levels of patient mortality. And that's the equivalent of around 40 deaths on average for an acute hospital in a year. So that might seem in one sense, in a statistical sense, like a small uh, decline, unless you're one of those 40. <laughs> but if you think of that, of that at a national level, if we could increase that percentage from 3%, uh, from 5% rather, to 25% across the system, then that would be associated, if this was a direct causal relationship, with around 30,000 deaths per year. So, Understanding the implications of team working for outcomes in healthcare, I think, is really important because what it implies is that we really need to work very much harder to make a difference to the quality of team working in healthcare in order that we can make a huge difference to patient outcomes. This is just as important as medication errors, as new surgical techniques, as antibiotics as infection control in terms of patient outcomes. So it's fundamental to our thinking about how we deliver patient care.